again and welcome back to Fresh at Burcott. Well here we are at the beginning of April and I thought today that we'd talk about a group of plants that is going to be looking at its best any time now. They come under the general heading of ericaceous plants and they include rhododendrons, azaleas and camellias. You can see here we've got some amazing camellias. This beautiful pink variety here which is called EG Waterhouse. This beautiful one, I love this one, the colour is fantastic, sort of salmony pink. That is elegans, Camellia elegans. They are absolutely beautiful plants, but they are all what we call ericaceous plants. Now that means that they are lime hating. So if you are in an area where you've got a lot of limestone um, or chalk in the soil, they won't do terribly well just planting them in the garden, but they do do fantastically well in pots. Both camellias and rhododendrons are very easily grown in pots and actually that bit of um, tightness that where it sort of binds the roots up a little bit does seem to encourage them to flower very freely as well. So they do really well in pots. You do need to use though an ericaceous compost. Now this compost has all the nutrients in that the camellias or rhododendrons will need but it has very little um, lime in and very rich in iron, which is the element that they find very difficult to access if they're on a limey soil. So camellias are looking absolutely amazing now. Evergreen plants, so you've got this lovely glossy evergreen foliage. They're surprisingly tough, although they look so exotic. They're surprisingly tough plants, quite hardy, but you will find that the um, buds can get frosted, particularly if you put them somewhere where they're going to be in the sun, where the sun rises. In the, so don't put them on an east-facing uh, wall or in the east-facing part of the garden, because if that bud is frozen and then thaws out very quickly as the sun gets onto it, you'll find it will brown and drop off very quickly. So west or south facing for them, and they'll they'll do fantastically. So that's the amazing camellias. And now we're going to have a look at some rhododendrons and azaleas. Rhododendrons fall broadly into two groups, the larger flowering and larger growing varieties, and then the dwarf varieties. Here are some lovely plants. Uh, this is a beautiful red one here. This is called Marquita's Prize, a really showy, bright red um, flower on that one. And then this one, I think, is a lovely looking one. This one is called uh, Marie Fortier. And you can see it's got this shocking pink flower, but an almost black centre to the flower. Now this centre here will really attract the bees. This is what they look for, these sort of runways to get in and get all that amazing nectar out. So they are really fantastic plants to have if you're interested in attracting wildlife into your garden. You can see here the flower buds just coming here probably about another three or four weeks before these are really showing colour but they are going to really give you an absolutely fabulous show they're just full of bud and a pretty variegated leaf on that variety there that has a lovely purple flower but that very attractive leaf all evergreen like the camellias so again they make a great plant for giving you a good show all through the year so these are some of the dwarf rhododendrons here. Obviously they're going to be much smaller, much lower growing than the large flowered types. This dwarf one here, shamrock, has this lovely sort of yellowy green um, flower. And these are fantastic plants for pots, They're really ideal for pots. You need a pot probably about um, 8 to 12 inches um, wide for, for them to grow really well. Don't forget, use that ericaceous compost. Feed them with an ericaceous feed as well, that just helps to build up that, uh, that iron in the soil and really help them to, to put on some growth. Um, they develop their flower buds for flowering the following year through this summer, so these flowers will have started forming last summer, so it is important that you feed them well through the summer so that they're really going to initiate plenty of flowers for you the next spring. They, you can see they're just about to start showing colour now. Here's another lovely one here called Gristade. This is one of the earliest flower, um, ones to come into flower. Just, just starting to come now. These lovely um, purple flowers there. And again, a fantastic plant for pots. So all of those ericaceous plants, they are lovely, lovely plants. They give you a fantastic show early on in the um, spring. So a really worthwhile garden plant but they just need that little bit of extra care just to make sure that you get the soil conditions right.